Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of the Real World Nutrition Podcast. This is episode 126, Eating Healthier on a Budget. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Real World Nutrition Podcast. I am Shelly Rael, the host and founder of Real World Nutrition and a registered dietitian nutritionist. So as we are starting March, I want to let you know that March is National Nutrition Month. And this is where we observed and recognized this month-long celebration, highlighting the importance of making informed food choices and developing sound eating and physical activity habits. Now, this is an excellent opportunity to reflect on our dietary patterns and consider how to make healthier choices that benefit our overall well-being. However, a common thing that I hear and I get pushback on is that eating healthier costs a lot of money. It is more expensive to eat healthier. And already food prices are soaring and people are paying more for their food, how could they possibly also integrate eating healthier when they are being very budget conscious? So one of the things I want to point out before I get into my tips for eating healthier on a budget is this misconception that eating healthier means spending more money. Because the first thing that people say to me is, I can't afford to go to Whole Foods. I can't afford to go to Sprouts because it costs so much. And I say, you do not have to shop at specialty stores or invest in expensive ingredients to have a healthy, nutritious diet. So if you are going out of your way to go to what I refer to as specialty stores, stores that imply that they have healthier options, I want you to consider looking at your neighborhood grocery store. The grocery store, when I say neighborhood, whatever is close to you. It can be the national chain. It can be a local grocery store. But look around without worrying about going to the specialty store. And most grocery stores have the same healthier options as some of these other specialty stores without charging a lot extra. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, how you can shop and eat healthily without breaking the bank and finding everything in your local grocery store of choice because they all have a wide range of affordable and nutritious options. So short answer here, unless you're going to the convenience store, shopping at the gas station, most grocery stores are going to be, you're going to be able to use all 10 of these tips at that grocery store. All right. So today, 10 tips for eating healthier on a budget. All right. So first thing is plan your meals meal planning, and I want to emphasize this is planning ahead for what you're going to eat. This does not necessarily mean meal prepping. So take some time each week to plan your meals and snacks. And you can get highly detailed and plan breakfast and lunch and dinner and your snacks. But you can also do something like a theme of the day. That includes the main meal. So plan what you're going to do for dinner and maybe plan that that can also be lunch the next day. You can plan to have the same thing, same general thing each day for breakfast if you wish. The only thing I recommend is that you ensure that you have vegetables and whole grains to go with your main meal, which I also want to say includes protein, but people tend to build their meals around their protein. And then have that plan for breakfast and have that plan for lunch. So if you want to do your lunch, be a sandwich and an apple and 
I don't know, chips or whatever it may be. That's not what I'm recommending, but just you can have the same thing for lunch. You can have the same thing for breakfast and just make sure you get five to seven servings for that when you go shopping. And I'm assuming that's just for you. Of course, if you have a family, scale that. And when you're planning breakfast and lunch, as I said, you may not need as much detail, but ensure include you include a fruit, you include a vegetable. So instead of chips for lunch, having, you know, carrots or tomatoes and have the protein for most meals and something for each day. So buy seven bananas, buy seven apples, buy seven yogurts. So, and again, I've emphasizing this would be just for one person, scale that for the rest of the family. So this will help you if you have a plan that helps you avoid last minute impulse purchases and can help ensure you're making nutritious choices. Number two, shop with a list. So make a list. So when you're making your meal plan for the week, Shop with a list and stick to that grocery list to avoid overspending on items you don't need. So, of course, if you have your list and you're at the store and you realize, oh, well, I also need a toilet paper, well, of course, buy it. Or, oh, I forgot I needed pepper. Of course, buy it. But when you stick to that list, that helps with minimizing those impulse purchases. And focus on getting the less or lower processed foods overall, so that would be fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins. So that grocery list is the map of what you need and what aisles you need to go down. And if I, I get a little bit more uptight, uptight's not the right word, but a little bit more detailed, is I tend to write my list in the order of the store as it's laid out because I am familiar with the stores I tend to shop at. So I know exactly what order things go in. So when I go to Costco, for example, or to my local grocery store, I have everything in order. So I'm not scanning up and down my list constantly. And once in a while, I might forget something and have to go back, but that's pretty rare. So again, that list is the map of what you need and what aisles you must go down. And you can choose go to go down every single aisle. However, the fewer aisles you'll go down, the less you will impulse buy and the less you will spend. And just an additional tip when you shop with a list, the other thing, or just when you shop in general, don't shop hungry. Self-control is out the window if you are hungry while you are shopping. Things that you won't normally eat look good. Things that you said you're not going to eat, you're going to buy. And it's just really impossible. And people say they have no self-control. No, it's called being a human. So have something to eat before you go or eat or don't be hungry at least. All right, number three, buy in bulk. Now, I already mentioned Costco, but I want to emphasize this. You don't have to be a member of a warehouse store to buy in bulk. So things like staple items like rice, dried beans, oats, and even nuts, you can buy in bulk at most grocery stores. And it's cost effective, and it also helps reduce waste with packaging. So again, you don't have to go to the warehouse stores where bulk buying is the name of the game there, but do this at your regular grocery store. So if you eat rice on a regular basis, buying a five pound bag of rice instead of a one pound bag of rice, it's going to cost a little bit more in the initial investment, but in the long run, it is cheaper overall. So if you can afford to do this, buy the larger bag of rice buy the larger bag of dried beans that you can get at the traditional grocery store. And of course, if you go to a warehouse store and can afford to go to a warehouse store, buy things there. As long as you have two things here, space in your home to store it, and it won't go bad or spoil before you can use it. So I've seen people who buy the five pound package of bacon and Part of me is horrified and I love bacon, but I'm going, there's no way a family of four should be able to eat that five pounds of bacon before that goes bad. So 
don't don't overspend or overbuy in the anticipation that you might have it, especially if it's going to go bad or spoil. All right, number four, choose seasonal produce. So seasonal fruits and vegetables are usually more affordable and taste fresher, and they're loaded with nutrients. So fresh fruits and vegetables, go for it. Here's the deal is you may want fresh peaches in January, but good luck finding them. And if you do find them, you're going to pay a pretty penny for them and they may not taste as good. You may want to get cranberries in May. Good luck unless you're digging in the freezer for the ones that you put in there last fall, but they may just be impossible to find. And I know most people are like, who would want cranberries in May? hey, I like cranberries. But here's the challenge is even as somebody who knows this, talks about seasonal produce, I don't always know what is in season before I go to the store. I show up at the store and see that they have certain fruits and veggies available. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize it was the season. So Fruit produce varies by season, but it can also vary by region. So I'm going to include two links in the show notes where you can see what tends to be in season, spring, summer, fall, and winter, as well as a seasonal food guide that tells you what's in season this time of year or this time of the month in your area. So when I looked up my area and what's in season, there's not a lot of fruits right now, but it's a lot, a lot of vegetables. Now, I don't only buy local in part because there's going to be, when you buy local, you are often very limited is what you to what you can get each season. So keep that in mind that you want to buy seasonally, but you may not always want to buy seasonally to your region as it will just be extremely limited in what you can get. Now, this brings me to number five, explore frozen options. Don't skip the frozen food aisle. Now, people have this idea that frozen section or the freezer section is the frozen pizza and ice cream and heat and eat foods, which of course that is, but this also has my recommendation of the frozen fruits and vegetables And I, my favorite is frozen fruits and vegetables, because that means I always have something on hand. You can also get frozen seafood. And where I live, frozen seafood is pretty much all we get because I'm in a desert southwest landlocked place. But you can also um, get frozen chicken, other frozen options. And this is something that helps with saving money. It's just as nutritious and it's often more budget friendly. That's what I said, saving money and can help reduce food waste. Okay, number six, this tends to go with number one, plan your meals, make a plan. Number six is cook at home. Eating out may be super convenient, but it really can cost a lot of money and quickly drain your wallet. So instead, try cooking at home more often. And this is the other thing is people think that cooking healthy takes a lot of time. It can be very simple. It can be budget friendly. You can use recipes that utilize affordable ingredients. But here's the thing is I often say, hey, you can bake fish or bake chicken, make some frozen veggies and use a container of pre-cooked rice. It can be simple. It can be budget friendly. And when I say a container of pre-cooked rice, I buy pre-cooked brown rice because it takes 90 seconds to reheat. But you can make a batch of rice and then divide it up and freeze it in individual servings or appropriate servings and then just reheat it. So that way it's already there. So cooking at home doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to take a lot of ingredients. Of course, it can become complicated. It can take a lot of ingredients, but really it doesn't have to. And the simpler can also mean nutritious. Number seven 
embrace plant-based eating. Now, here's the other thing here is incorporating plant-based meals into your diet can be a budget-friendly option. And this does not mean go for the meat, mimicking foods that can be very costly, and sometimes more costly than meat, but consider beans, lentils, tofu, and vegetables that are all nutritious and affordable protein sources. Some people don't think a vegetable as having protein. It's not high in protein, but contributes to overall protein intake. And here is another tip here. If you really feel that you need meat at your meals or you want meat at your meals and are looking to help with your your finances, be more budget friendly, you can cut your meat with cooked beans or lentils or chopped mushrooms. So when I say cut your meat is if you have a pound of ground beef that you want to cook, add a pound of beans or lentils or chopped mushrooms. And now you have two pounds of food and it can, when you cook it all together, it helps expand that meat that is a little bit more budget friendly there. Number eight, minimize food waste. All right, so budget friendly, if we're going to be throwing away food, that's throwing money into the trash. So be mindful of food waste by using leftovers creatively, freezing any excess ingredients for later use, and this helps stretch your grocery budget even further. So if you are making a meal that makes four servings, and that can be it, and again, I'm assuming a household of one or two people, but of course, if you have a, a household of four or more, you're going to be making more servings. But in my household, which is now a household of two, the servings is sometimes two, but sometimes it's four, which means lunch the next day. It means putting extra made food into the freezer. So I'll buy, going back to the bulk, even at my regular grocery store, buy a four pound flat or tray of ground meat and then divide that up because that four pound tray costs less than four one pound trays. So that's that with that. So when I say ensure you're doing it safely is when you have leftovers, refrigerate them right away and use them within four days and then reheat that to a minimum of 165 degrees. Now you can eat things cold, but if you're reheating it, do it to 165 degrees. If you're gonna freeze things, you wanna take those leftovers, cool them and freeze them within a couple hours of preparation, and then label the item with what it is. And that seems silly, I've been teased about that, but you don't wanna be going through things and be wondering what it is and date it. So put the date on there because you wanna use that within four to six months. So when I buy my ground beef and divide it up and freeze it, of course I date it. So that way I know if one got lost in the bottom of the freezer, I know to use that first. All right, number nine, compare prices. Now this doesn't necessarily mean going to different stores. That, in my opinion, defeats the whole purpose of comparing prices. But compare prices of the store brand or the non-name brand to the name brand. And you'll usually find it costs a lot less and the quality is similar. So if I buy the store brand version of canned beans as opposed to a name brand, the beans taste the same. They have the same nutritional value. There just means some beans may not look as nice. And who cares? You're going to be chewing them up anyway. The, the quality is pretty much the same. And then the other thing I mentioned, and I've done episodes of this in the past, skip organic and other potentially misleading labels that imply things are healthier or more nutritious with a higher price point. So organic is only referring to how that food is grown, nothing to do with nutritional value and a lot different in most cases regarding cost. Non-GMO is often labeled on things when those versions or bionet engineered versions of that food doesn't exist, yet it's on the label. So if you're paying more, don't. 
And then some where I see where it says, like the chicken says, no antibiotics ever. Well, chickens don't, there's no antibiotics in any of our chicken that we purchase. So don't pay extra for these labels. It's misleading. It's accurate, but misleading. And people pay more because they think it's better for them. All right. And number 10, stay hydrated with water. Now, this may seem obvious, but I tell people skip the bottled and canned beverages that can have added sugars. And even if you're getting diet versions of beverages, how much is that costing you compared to plain water? And I'm talking about if you're being very, very budget conscious about this, this is important to consider. How much are you paying for those beverages? I also say skip the juices too. Juice is 100% fruit juice has nutritional value and it costs a lot and is not necessary. Okay, so skip the bottled water as well. If we still have to say this right now, boy, we're in trouble. But compared to what you get out of your tap, compared to bottled water, the cost is ridiculous and the waste is over the top. And if you are concerned about your, your municipal water, what comes out of your tap, then um, if your tap water is that bad, somebody should be providing you water you know, sterilized or appropriate water. Uh, but most of us aren't living in towns that have boil water orders or dangerous levels of contaminants in our water. But seriously, stop paying more for bottled water. So here's the thing is those are the 10 tips for eating healthier on a budget. And while may not all 10 of those tips may not be for you, integrating some of those is certainly going to help you save money overall. You don't have to eat at home every day, but the more you eat at home, the more you save. So that is my top tips, as I said, about the misconception that eating healthier means you need to spend more money, that you have to go to specialty grocery stores, and making informed choices about your food. All right, everyone, that is Real World Nutrition for this week. I would love it if you would Take a moment to follow this podcast or this, yeah, the Real World Nutrition Podcast, wherever you listen, and you can get a new episode each Friday when you get up in the morning. And that is it for this week's episode of Real World Nutrition. Take care. Bye for now.